If you live in or around San Antonio, chances are you've been to a Santicos theater. But you may not know your popcorn is supporting nonprofit organizations across eight counties. Andrew Brooks explains the mission behind those movies. Not only is the theater chain a massive donor to the San Antonio Area Foundation, it also gives its employees, including teens, the chance to serve their community once the lights come up. Welcome to BearCast. I'm Randy Lankford, and this is BearCast, a weekly interview with business, political, education, and nonprofit leaders. We're examining the relationships between all four and how each one benefits from the success of the other three. Santicos Entertainment is a unique enterprise. It's a for profit business, but it exists to give back to the nonprofits in the San Antonio area through donations, sponsorships, grants, and programming that educates, cures, supports, and enhances lives in the community. Andrew Brooks, the company's executive director of sales and marketing, plays a large role in that mission. Andrew, welcome. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Randy, I sure, you, I sure do appreciate you having me on. Man, it's it's crazy times for everybody. So uh, I wanted to touch base with you and see how you're doing. I, Man, <laughs> we're surviving. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned the the unique Santicos business model in the opening, and can you can you explain a little bit how that works? Uh, you're, you're you're a you're a business that's basically a nonprofit, maybe sorta. We so we are what's called a social enterprise. And we are a for-profit business that donates all of our profits away to a nonprofit. And it was really unique the way John Santico set this up. So uh, as we know, our dear friend, John, he, John Santico's passed away in December of 2014. And when he did, he left all of his real estate and theater holdings to the San Antonio Area Foundation. So he donated $600, $650 million worth of business to the San Antonio Area Foundation uh, for them to create good across the community. And so he had some really unique wishes, uh, and that was grow my business, which was the theater company in real estate. Um, And as you grow my business, when you have profits left over, donate them to the San Antonio Area Foundation. And what they will do is then distribute those funds back into the community through causes uh, like successful senior aging, um, youth success. Uh, He had a lot of uh, health and cancer research. And so he had these unique uh, areas of interest in which the area foundation is then responsible for taking those funds and distributing them through the community to create good. And so it's, it's unique because we get hit a lot for donations. And a lot of times we have to say the way that this business model is, is set up, those donations go through the San Antonio area foundation because right. we take all the money we make. And at the end of the year, it goes to them. So is, is it, is it two separate organizations, Santicos entertainment and Santicos foundation? It is. So we have the Santicos entertainment, uh, we actually have Santico's Enterprises, okay. which is the umbrella over Santico's Entertainment and Santico's Real Estate. Right. And both of those, all the money goes, all of our profit at the end of the year goes to the San Antonio Area Foundation. So we donate into the John L. Santico's Charitable Foundation, okay. which is a fund of the San Antonio Area Foundation. And so then they manage that fund to distribute the money into the community. He was really, John was such an incredible Ford thinker the way he set this up and, and his intent with the gift. Uh, but it does sometimes make it hard to explain. <laughs> it's a little confusing, but, yeah. but, but well done. Um, well done. So, so the, the, the bequest was made in, at John's death in 2014, but the actual operation took a little while to, to get it up to speed. So that was 2017? It did. Actually, everything shifted in 2015, but then to get everything kind of ironed out uh, was about 2017. And it was right before I started uh, as those things were starting to get ironed out. And that's where I was going was you, as I understand it, you started with Santicos in in the spring of 2017. So you came in just as that handoff was being formalized. Seeing that going on as as an outsider, you weren't a Santicos employee at the time, seeing that going on, was that an attraction to you? Was 
What was it like to go through that? It, it was actually a big attraction to me. And so uh, at the time, uh, I'd had a newborn child and I was okay. traveling a bunch and wanted to get back to San Antonio and in the area around some family. I'm from Almondorf and Floresville originally. Oh, okay. Um, and so had a uh, headhunter reach out and we started some conversations and then I came in and met with some folks and I was a Santicos fan as we grew up. I saw movies at the Mayan. So mm -hmm. the Mayan is my theater of choice. It's still my theater I go to <laughs> today. And, uh, when they told me, I was like, Hey, it's not the same Santicos you might remember. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Cause I love the experience. They said, well, now we're an experience with a mission. Right. And I was like, with a mission, tell me about this. And they go, well, everything we make we donate to help nonprofits in the community and at that point i was just yeah right yeah <laughs> gimme gimme yeah i was like are you serious She's like yeah everything we do is to benefit the community and i was like oh my gosh i was like what bigger why can you have that's an right. amazing why so why are we in business why do we come to work every day and that's what really resonated with me and the culture in which was now being built inside this company mm -hmm. Uh, and it was, yeah, it was, it was a major plus for me. So at that time to come in and aid a marketing department, that's going to get to tell this story. Yeah. To answer your question. Yes, yeah. Loved it. <laughs> major, major, uh, uh, turn on for me to be able to come in and do that. Like you, I'm a, I'm a Santicos veteran. I've been to mm -hmm. uh, I'll, probably all of the Santicos theaters, but I, probably not fair to say that. I don't know how many there are. And that's kind of my, my question. Most people in San Antonio are familiar with Santicos. They've been to a Santicos theater, but I'm not sure we all understand the scale of, of the operation. Can you give me some, some idea of how big it is? It is. We have nine uh, theaters and we work what's called a DMSA. So when you look at it in our region, so when the theater industry looks at us and our territory, um, depending on how far you expand it, there's either 22 or 27 theaters uh, in our area. But uh, we have uh, nine of those, so about a third, but yet we control over 50% of the market share. Oh, wow. And so that, that is just a kudos to our fans, mm -hmm. uh, to the community which embraces us. And of course, Cibolo uh, being our newest location, so it's out in Guadalupe County, Cibolo, Texas. Right. And when John uh, designated his gift to the Area Foundation, one of the stipulations he made is that all the money had to come back into Bear County or one of the continuous seven counties. So there's an eight county area of interest. And of course, Cibolo and Guadalupe County fall into that. Uh, and that's our newest theater. Uh, we just celebrated our one year anniversary and what's really unique uh, next week. We're going to, we have a really fun surprise. We're going to announce, we're going to be celebrating the four year anniversary of Casablanca, which okay. was the last theater that John was actually working on wow. when he passed away. Wow. Yeah. Um, the, as I understand it, keep me honest here, but I seem to recall there was a Santico's presence in Houston. We did. We had a. Uh, and that we went two, away. It did. Okay. Uh, we had two theaters in Houston, uh, Katy, and then I forget the the other one. There was a what we called a P twenty two. So here uh, in San Antonio at the Rim, we have what we effectively call P nineteen. So that's Palladium with nineteen screens. Okay. Houston had P twenty two. It was a beautiful theater. Uh, it matched what P nineteen looks like, plus a couple of screens plus bowling, plus wow. these amazing VIP areas. And then there was a second Silverado uh, location. I believe it was Tom Ball. Okay. And uh, as I was coming in, there was still, there was just still, uh, what's the word, curiosity about how this gift would work and how people in Houston would take to the message that the right. funds are coming back to San Antonio. So the leadership at that time, uh, had decided to sell those two assets. And, and that's where I was going with that question. Was that with the decision to, to, to leave the Houston market part of this uh, idea that we're going to concentrate on Bear and the seven contiguous counties? Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. I, I get that. Um, let, me, let me go back to the corporate culture there at Santicos for a minute. And you, you talk about what a, what a great idea it is for you and how, how you embrace that. It, it, does it permeate the entire Santicos organization? I mean, do the, the guys selling the popcorn, do they get to tell that story as well? 
we love for them to tell that story. <laughs> and so I will say it's really been the past year and a half uh, to, to two years, really the past year and a half that that is really starting to permeate through the whole company. Okay. Um, it was a selling point for me. And as we worked with the area foundation together on how we tell this story, um, it, then we, we created this nucleus that we put into our training program. So every new hire is going to hear about the story and John's gift and what it means oh, to wow. the community because we want every single person to feel that, uh, yeah. emotional connection. And so, uh, and each one of us as an employee of this company has a stake in how well our community does. And so we also implemented what we call our, our quarterly show off meetings. And that's where our theater and the staff get to come show off for a night. And we have a few hundred uh, come out and we give a breakdown on how the company's doing, how the culture is. And every person from one of our greeters who we call a, a guest experience specialist uh, to our GMs, to our CEO is there and presenting and it's all about culture. And so our culture is really, really turned a corner to be fun and caring. So we want to have fun. We get to work in movies every day. Right. Uh, the real estate side's fun too. We, we have fun with those guys. Uh, but we get to greet people. We get to give them a chance to escape this crazy reality uh, oh. that we've all been living in. And we just have a smile on our face. And at the same time, every time they're buying a popcorn, they're buying a drink, they're buying those epic nachos, they're helping the community. Right. And so right. they love telling that story now. And it's really been fun to watch our staff embrace that as a whole. That's great. And, and it's, it's great to see that you are not just talking the talk. Uh, you, you make it part of your training program that we want people to understand why we're here and why we do what we do. And, and, and uh, Oh, real quick, Randy. Sure. Guess what we, guess what we call our training. It's culture day. Culture day. <laughs> nice. Culture day. Nice. So you got to come in and you're going to go through and culture day is the beginning of the training. So okay. the, that first day is culture and nice. this is the culture we have. This is the culture we want. And that's what we, that's what we push. And, and, and putting it, like you say, putting that on the first day, making that this, everything else is built off of this. We're going to go through this foundation first and everything else flows out of this. How does that in, impact your, the, the, the actual bottom line, the business operations? I can see it being a factor in your hiring that we want people to understand why we do what we do. And, but you're obviously looking for people who fit into that culture. We're not just going to hire anybody. If you're just coming in to make a buck, there, there's probably a better fit somewhere else. We want you to, to embrace what we're doing. But I would also think that there are people out there who are looking like you were. I, you know, I can make a living in a lot of ways. I can earn a living in a lot of ways, but I want to feel like I'm doing something positive for the, for the, the, the human race. Do, do you get people coming in asking you for that opportunity when you're hiring? We do. Uh, and, you know, we've hired a couple of new people in the marketing department uh, over the past year. And one of them was aware of our mission. One of them wasn't. Okay. Uh, one of them came in knowing what we do. And that's what drew them to apply. Okay. Uh, and they, they basically came out and said it and had done their research and had asked uh, people and they're like, I, I want a chance. I want to be a part of this. Um, and the other one who didn't was like, Oh my gosh, are you serious? Like I get to do this. And it was me all over again. Right. And, and just to watch her eyes light up, I was like, that was me three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pay me to do this. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so to watch both ends of the spectrum, uh, it is. And in some of those interviews, we, it was very clear. We had a, a few individuals that are like, Hey, one of them was like, I'm in here for a little bit and then uh, I'm going to be off. And so, sure. Once from there, then it won't happen. Uh, it's like, just sorry, we're we're not like it. That's a, it, we, we don't do that here. Yeah, I, I'm I am personally so grateful to Santicos not only for all the years of entertainment it's provided me, but for your your involvement in Bearfest. You you came on board at the very beginning. We had our very first premiere at the Mayan Palace. The Mayan that, that you guys let us use for, let us take over for a night. Um it was important to us to give the students that chance to see their videos on a big screen in a real theater. And 
you made that possible for us to do that. But I'm kind of curious as to why did you do that? What made you want to get involved with this little startup nonprofit that's going to put on a high school film festival that nobody else is doing? We're, I'm very proud of that. San Antonio is the only place where an event like Bearfest, where you, you pair high school media production teams with nonprofit organizations to create outreach tools. We're the only ones doing that. And, and therefore, it can be kind of like you're saying, it's, it, it's a little complicated, a little difficult to explain to people. What made you want to get involved? So what I like to think in this company, a lot of us have what John had, and that was an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial drive and his drive for innovation. And so what you guys do is so innovative, working with those high schoolers, giving them the opportunity to dip their toes into film and videography that from from our perspective, from Santico's perspective, it's exactly what you said. Nobody else was doing that. And so that's why we want to be involved and that's why we like to help. Uh, Because John, at the same time, uh, he was entrepreneurial but he had this innovative side when he built palladium and was serving sushi and gelato. Nobody else was doing that. <laughs> yeah, he, was, <laughs> he was the first one to serve beer in a theater. Uh, he built these massive screens, uh, had the highest sound. And so what you all do there at Bearfest is innovative. And for us to get the opportunity for our local uh, talent to be able to see that on the big screen is exciting for us. And I can tell you at the Mayan that night to watch those kids and their families, <laughs> the families uh, light up with pride. There's no better feeling. Right. That's our, that's our mission. And so um, it, it gets hard with some nonprofits when they're asking, you know, cash and things like that. Those donations have to go through the San Antonio area foundation. But when we're able to do something like with bear fest, uh, and come in and utilize our auditoriums and give those local talents the ability to see what they're creating on screen. That's a win-win for all of us. That's great. We certainly appreciate it. It's it's funny you mentioned the the, the parents lighting up. That it's they come into the the festival. They show up at the premiere kind of begrudgingly. I got to go to this thing. My kid did some kind of video or something. It's some high school thing. Then they get there. And they see what their kids have done. They see their kids get treated like celebrities and they see these productions on a big screen and they walk out. The parents walk out with a new understanding of their own children. It, it, that's amazing to me. I, yeah, I knew my daughter was talented, but I didn't know she could do that. Oh my that's gosh. Exactly, that's exactly the stuff I heard that yeah. night. They were like, Oh my, like my child created that. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it, 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 part of what we do at Bear Pass, part of the purpose is to immerse kids in a nonprofit organization for a significant period of time. This takes mm-hmm. weeks for these productions. We, we pair the teams up in October and, and the premieres in February. So they're working, they're, they're on site at a nonprofit for weeks at a time. We want them to, to understand what the nonprofit does and why they do it and get a, get a real taste of what community service is like. Given Santico's commission, commitment to the community, I would expect that resonates pretty well with you. The yeah, idea of giving kids that, that chance to learn what nonprofit organizations do. Very much so. Uh, that resonates so high with me. Uh, it just, it goes back to, to help, helping others. Yeah. If, if we all had that, uh, that charitable heart, uh, I just, I think the community would be in such a better place. Yeah, I agree. And, and one of the reasons we do that is to give a kid, the kids an understanding of, of what nonprofit service means that you can, you can be an accountant and, and have a passion for your community, or you can be a carpenter and, and support veterans. But we also want to, want to immerse them in that culture, that it's not only the nuts and bolts, it's the attitude. Look at, these, look at these adults who are giving of themselves, who are working towards a higher purpose than just trying to make a living, very much like what you're doing there at, at, at Santicos. We want kids to, to see those kind of role models and, and emulate that behavior. And if we can light that fire when they're 16, 17, 18, that can burn for a lifetime. For and you guys are doing very much the same thing. Exactly. And we, you, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. That was said so well, Randy. Uh, and that's why culture day is so important to us. When we right. can, when we can uh, implement that into the kids when they're 16, 17, coming in and working as one, as, as one of our guest experience specialists, we hope that fire 
burns in them for a lifetime uh, to look for the mission in any company that they can work with, work with or for. Um, and ours, ours really started, we go out and do some community events because our staff is now coming to us and they're like, I want to go out and give elbow grease. Nice. I want to, the kids are asking. So we created some Santico shirts on the back. It says volunteer because we may just go to an event and we're just showing up to, to volunteer. Uh, we haven't, with that rip, bring a hammer. And they're just asking, they're like, we just want to go out as a company and help. And for us, the past year, starting to hear that, uh, we knew we were moving in the right direction. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good, that's a good uh, feeling, good feedback. Well, and now here we are in a, a global pandemic. My first, as a matter of fact, first, first pandemic I've ever been through. And that's had a significant impact on theaters and, and gathering and, and that sort of thing. So, Give me a little peek behind the curtain. What's the path forward? How are theaters in general and, and Santico's going to proceed from here? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. I wish I had a crystal ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will, you know, talking about young people, uh, I got to give kudos to our operations team. Uh, what they are doing and executing in the theater every day to keep our community safe is I don't have enough good words for them. Right. Um, we put a plan in. We were one of the first, what you call hard tops, to open in the country. So there's drive ins and then there's hard tops, like okay. our locations. So that was a new word for me to learn. Hard top. <laughs> I feel and, like an insider now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I feel like from the very beginning, our, our messaging has been on point because our messaging revolved around two things in the beginning, and that was uh, safety and care. So the safety of our employees and the safety of our community and the care for our employees and the care for our community. That's great. And uh, if anybody has seen the messages that our CEO put out, um, any of the news interviews, I hope that's what they got. It's all about safety first. Right. And then once we decided to open, uh, a really unique thing that not a lot of people asked was, how did you decide to open? And the answer to that is it was our employees. So when the governor made the announcement, uh, our CEO and COO brought everybody together. We went through our plan and he said, I think you have a good plan, but we're not going to open unless our employees want to. So you have 36 hours to call the employees and get feedback. And if they are not comfortable, then we will not open. And so that's what we did. There that's was remarkable. HR, there was marketing people, there were salespeople, and we just started calling employees. Say, hey, if we were to open, here's everything we're going to do. Do you feel comfortable and want to come back? And overwhelmingly, they said yes. That's great. They, they want to come back. And that's what really led to us open the door. So right now we are at 50% capacity. So we have checkered seating throughout the auditorium. Nice. So you're going to have six feet side to side. Of course, in our luxury recliner, recliners, you're going to have more than six feet. Up yeah. To back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so party time. It is. We're, uh, <laughs> we're doing everything uh, we can to keep six feet of distance. When you walk into that theater, you're going to see stickers on the ground that say, be smart, stay six feet apart. Um, if, if you're not adhering to that, uh, an employee is going to kindly ask you, hey, please give some space. At 50%, you've been in a lot of our theaters. They're pretty massive. So we have, we have a lot of room. We're, uh, we're doing one way through drink stations. Oh, okay. Uh, we're sanitizing, uh, seats after all the shows. Uh, and we're, we're doing high traffic areas, of course. And so we're doing everything we can to keep our employees and our community safe. And we're going to do that for as long as we, we need to. And we're going to do that. What's really neat is uh, some of these practices we were doing before we ever shut down. <laughs> And so uh, we've just stepped it up and, and these are the standard now. And these are, this is the standard we're going to live by moving forward. And, and, yeah. I, I, I see the whole world changing the way we, the way we've done things for, for decades that we all took for granted and said, this is the way you do this. Not so much anymore. There's, there's going to be changes. Nobody's even thought of yet, but I would expect yeah, no less. I would expect no less from Santicos that you guys are, are on the forefront and, and doing things safely and sensibly. And I appreciate that. <laughs> Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for all you've done for Bearfest. Sincerely appreciate it. And for San Antonio. Um, thank you for uh, being here. Thanks for your insight. Thanks for all you do for the community. And I will talk to you. I will see you soon. The next time Great. I'm at the theater. 
I sure hope so, Randy. And I can't wait to get the kids back in. So as soon as we can, let's get it done. Let's do it. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Thanks, Randy. Have a good one. You too.